Good morning, everyone. Thank you for showing up for your learning, and welcome to uh, the chapter review in your textbook. It's, in a, it's a very useful set of problems that are uh, well adjusted to our needs for getting ready for our test tomorrow. And they go through topic by topic and also reference the pages that uh, are useful to you in the textbook if you want to look more at uh, more questions. And it gives you, make sure you have the vocabulary to discuss uh, what it is exactly that uh, you want to review. Now, the first few uh, topics here, functions, domain, and range, these were very popular topics to want to review today, particularly uh, domain and range. And uh, some of you asked, well, how is this relevant to the rest of the unit? Uh, and domain and range is, is uh, something that you want to be aware of when you're looking at a function. You want to be aware of what, it, what is its domain and range, meaning what is the total possible range of uh, inputs that I could use? What are some useful numbers or even meaningful numbers that I can be using in this uh, equation? So the domain refers to all the possible inputs, all the possible x values. And that might be important if you're looking at a situation like a car starts driving and uh, goes at a constant speed. We know that's going to create a line, but we're also, we also have this notion of it starts driving. It wasn't driving in negative time, it was just it was going now. Okay, so, uh, so we want to you know, be aware of, of these things that uh, our functions are talking about. When we look at the range of functions, uh, for example, trigonometric functions, the value of sine and the value of cosine go between 1 and negative 1. They never get bigger than one. They never get smaller than negative one. The outputs are always in that range. So when we talk about the range of those functions, we want to be aware of those things uh, and, and understand that those are the numbers we can expect when we're working with that function. All right, so now let's go through uh, uh, piece by piece. State the domain and range of each relation. All right, notice that they said that these are relations here. And uh, we have four of them to look at, and then we're going to want to know which are functions. All right. So here, this one, it's an oval. It goes, uh, its domain is all the possible x values. So we would say x is of the reals and x is um, as small as minus 2 and as large as 2. So the way we would write that, and people really wanted to review domain and range. So we'll go over this one very clearly. Uh, 1a, and we would say its uh, domain is a set of x values such that x is of the real numbers, okay? x can be, you know, numbers like fractions and radicals and all those numbers between 0 and 1. So we'd say real numbers here. If it's only integers, if it's only uh, counting numbers, then we would say i here, all right? So x is of the reals, and then we use a colon to indicate any limitations on x. So in this case, x can be, and we go smallest to largest, so I write down could be as small as negative 2, and that's less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. This tells me this is an interval, and it tells me x will always be between these two values, and it includes those values because I put the less than or equal to signs. And then I close my squiggle bracket. The range here, and let's just take another look at it again, the range goes from 3 to negative 3. So it's a little fatter in the, uh, in the up, down, in the vertical dimensions there. So range is a set of y values such that y is also of the reals. And uh, negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3. And then I close my squiggle bracket. All right. Now b, this, uh, this one has a range that's of the integers. And it's a much smaller range because I can, I can list it. And this is called a mapping diagram. These are my inputs on this side, and they output these things over here. So here I would say 1b, domain is a set of, we could say it's x values, such that x is of the integers, and uh, x is the following values, negative 2, 3, 5, and 11. x equals negative 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 11. There I can list the values because there's a short list. Uh, if there's lots then I need to find a way to uh, give a range or give a give a give an interval. So then the range are all the possible outputs and then I would say well that's 1, 2, 3, and 7. Okay, so y is a set of numbers such that y is of the integers 
and y is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 7, organized from least to greatest. Okay. Now, uh, C, let's take a look. C is a set of ordered pairs, and it works just like a mapping diagram. This tells me if I input 1, I output 4. If I input 2, I output 6. If I input 3, I output 10. If I input 4, I output 18. And if I input 5, I output 29. All right, so one thing to notice, none of the inputs are repeated. Now, why is that important? Well, in this one, we would say, is that a function or not? No, it does not pass the vertical line test. Look, when my pen goes through it, it touches at two points. Okay, so it does not pass the vertical line test. This one here, if I have an input of three, it might output two different things. That's a broken vending machine. That's a vending machine that sometimes gives you chips and sometimes gives you M&Ms and oftentimes gives you dissatisfied customers. It's not a function. This one, on the other hand, for every input, the output is unique. So it's a function. This one is a function. And its uh, range is uh, its domain. All the possible x values are x's of the integers, and x is 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Its range is y's of the integers, and y is 4, 6, 10, 18, and 29. Yeah, And it, uh, it looks to be quadratic, but it's not quite quadratic. This, this point makes it not quadratic. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it could be exponential. Anyway, let's keep looking. Uh, now, y is equal to 2x squared plus 11. Okay, so now we want to be able to kind of have a sketch of that in our head right away. Uh, it's a parabola. It's going to look, I'm just going to go to d here. Oh, get some lead. I'm often breaking the lead on this one. So here is a sketch. I'm going to write it in. Uh, f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 11. So this has a stretch factor of 2. It opens upwards. I know that this parabola opens upwards because 2 is positive. So it's a, it's a bowl collecting rain. It goes that way. And it has a y-intercept of 11, and that happens to be the vertex. How do I know it's the vertex? Uh, I'm really good at this stuff. But uh, I also know that its slope as it crosses the y-axis is 0 because there's no b. Because there's no b, it, it happens to be right there. Um, so this will have a minimum value, and the minimum value is 11. Actually, I just, just knowing that this opens upwards, um, and that this is already in, not only is this in standard form, but it's also in vertex form. Because, oh yeah, there's no square to complete. It's already a complete square right there. There's no loose x term. So um, <clears throat> this has a vertex at... Uh, 0, 11. So 11 is the minimum value for this parabola. And that's going to affect the way we talk about the range. So here, uh, range of this parabola is going to be a set of y values such that y is of the reals. And we want real numbers here because it could be any one of those numbers in there. But there's a limitation. y is greater than or equal to 11. 11 be our minimum value. So that's the smallest thing that y can ever be equal to. And indeed, y can equal it, and it equals it at exactly one point at its vertex. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that's how we would talk about the range. In this case, the domain is uh, x is of the reals, and that's it, because x could be any value with a parabola like that. Now, let's talk about which ones are functions and which ones are relations. We talked about how this one is a function because, number c, because all the Inputs mapped to a unique output. Fails vertical line test, not a function. This one um, has two outputs for one input, so it's not a function. It's only a relation. And number two, uh, sorry, number D, this is a function. Quadratics are functions. And we can say, well, we have an equation where y is not being raised to a power. y is not squared. y is not uh, having strange things done to it. So it's, uh, it is a function. Okay, so that's uh, section 1.1 uh, of your review, and I'll make a separate video for each section.